Okay, it looks like it's recording. Okay, so uh, here in After Effects, I'm just going to create a, uh, a new scene, and I'm going to create a couple of solid objects in there. I'm going to change the colors of them so that I know. So there's a yellow, and then there's going to be another solid. This is going to be red. Okay, and hit OK. And then I'll do an, another one, another solid that will be blue. All right, so I have these three layers right here, okay? And if I move them around, let's start off with the the blue one here. I can move them around here. I'm going to place them just like overlapping each other a little bit like that. Okay, so one, two, and three. Now, uh, as a reminder, your position of these layers, it will dictate what's in front or what's in back. So, for example, if I take the layer uh, with the yellow solid, that's the yellow back there if i move it to the front or the top of my list now it's in the front okay so you can see it's in the front there all right and so wherever i place them will dictate on its position there so i'm going to place it like that so you can see that there's a black background yellow red and blue okay and so anytime i need to select on one i can move it just like this right very simple very easy all right on top of all of this i'm going to go to layer new and camera Okay, and it comes up with this camera setting. This is where you need to dictate on the the camera that you are using in real life uh, to match it. If you need to do some like uh, matchmaking or some kind of like set of, set extensions or whatever you want to do, uh, but I'm going to leave it as as it is during the preset. But you can name the camera. You can change uh, the type of millimeter it's at, the zoom, everything. Okay, here, and I'm going to hit OK, and uh, I'm going to hit OK right there and so here i have a camera layer okay now i need to manipulate all of these things okay so if i grab the camera and see how nothing happens when i move my uh that layer where it says camera one see when i click in there i'm actually just selecting the other layers nothing's happening let me move that back that was the next one okay so if i can nothing's happening I need to use a different tool to help me move the camera, okay? Uh, one thing I would like to do just to make everything uh, working well is down here where we always put the blur on our on our uh, layers so that there's a little motion blur. Uh, towards the right, there's a little cube icon and it's a 3D layer. So we're going to turn those all on, okay? Now up here at the very top, next to the magnifying glass, there is an orbit around cursor tool. Okay, this one. If you click and drag, you'll see that there's different tools underneath that as well. Okay. Uh, next to that is the pan under cursor tool. And if you click click and hold, you'll see there's other things there too. So let's go to this one first. The one that has like a little ring around the ball. Looks like Saturn almost. And if you click and drag, look what's happening here. Okay. I am now manipulating the camera. All right. So I can move that camera. I can orbit in there and move around my objects, okay? If I wanna move up and down with the camera, I can select the uh, the the uh, tool right next to it that looks like a cross, and I can move it up and down, left and right, okay? Diagonally, on either way, so you can move it in any direction like you would normally in After Effects, but since we're manipulating the camera and not the objects, I can place this however I want. So I can place it like this, and then use that to move it around. There's another one here that looks like an arrow, has like a big end and a small end. That's actually showing the dolly, like forward and back. So if I click on that, it's not zooming in, is that I'm actually moving the camera forward. This is forward and away. So these three objects are here. And then if you hold down, there's other tools in there too, okay? So you can move it like this. That's, uh, you can, Go to the other objects so it orbits like so. Okay. Um, you can always just leave it on the main tool because it'll do pretty much everything you want right there. Those are to get like specific uh, functions. But if you notice that these three objects, these three are right on top of each other. Okay. They're flat like that. All right. So I need to manipulate these in space. So if we go to our regular move tool, okay, and if I were to select the blue solid, you'll notice that I get a new tool in here, okay? 
I can actually manipulate this by moving it forward. I'm going to grab the yellow and move it back like this. And then go back to my orbit tool, which is for the camera. And you don't have to select the camera, but it's best to make sure you're there. And now these are in three-dimensional space. They're separate each other. They're no longer right on top. Okay. So you can go ahead and just move it how you like. Okay. Maybe zoom out. Whatever you want to do. These... Going back to your move tool, selecting one of any one of these objects, you can not only move it in the Z, you can move it in the Y axis up and down. The Z is forward and back. There's the axis over there. You can move it side to side. There's also where you can rotate this. If you grab it here from the middle, you can like move it in any direction. Okay. But if you grab onto the circle, we can actually rotate that object. If you grab onto the Y, you can rotate it that way. Okay. And if you grab the blue, you can rotate it that way. And then go back to our orbit tool and move it around and however you want to. So what's the benefit of this? So if you're creating a scene that it requires depth of field with 2D objects, you can do it right in here. Okay. Just like this. You don't need to go into a 3D software like Maya or Blender or anything like that. You can do it right in this. Um, this is not to create things. This is only to view them in, in, in these different aspects, okay? Um, so just to give you an example, uh, let's get rid of these here. And I'll give you an example like, uh, let's try. Oh, I'll just make one. Okay. Let me open up Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. And let's go to So let's say I use something basic, uh, especially if you're doing something like animated. Um, I'm going to use this one here. Let me get the larger setting. Okay. And So I'm just gonna, um, actually I didn't have to open Photoshop because I'm gonna do this uh, already done. Let me just open this uh, new image. And we'll use this one. Hopefully this is a PNG, not a fake. Okay, so let me save this. We'll do this together. I just want to show you first and then um, and then we'll do it together just to be these computers take forever.
Oh, that didn't save. Save image as a web file apparently. I'll give it as a I'm gonna have to use Photoshop after all, not sure. Alright, let me open the file. Clipboard, create. Sorry guys, it's taking a little longer than I thought it would. Copy. Is it not showing? So that... Okay, that's weird. Um. I'm just going to use this image and then uh, another image that I just used right now. Okay. And we save this. I have to do it this way. Give me the This one can be a regular JPEG. I'm going to call this landscape. Save, yes, yes, yes. All right. So let me get rid of these. I'm going to keep my camera in there. Actually, I'm going to start all over so that it's fresh. So I'll create a new project, okay? And new composition. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to bring in the two images that I just saved, which is a landscape, cartoony, and a fence. Um, okay, for some reason, my... Other one, why? It's a JPEG. Hold on a second. Let me just save it as a Photoshop file. So you can bring Photoshop files into After Effects easily. All right, there it is. Okay. So I'm just going to drop this in there. Make it a little bit bigger. And then I have this fence. Hopefully it came in correctly. Because I just didn't. All right. Perfect. So this has a PNG background. See up here where it's black? That means it's transparent. Okay. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Uh, like so. It doesn't have to be. Actually, I'll make it just a tad smaller like there. So it's just like maybe the end of a fence like this. Oh, sorry. Um, right about there. All right, so if I were to do a, a cheap 3D camera effect, it would be to use the scaling, okay? So I can scale this up like this, right? Uh, maybe change the position, or I can put the pivot right around here, the anchor point tool, and then go back to my scaling, and it'll scale like that. Okay, see how it does that? But if I'm moving uh, or scaling up this fence and the idea is that I'm going forward into the space, then the background should move as well. Okay. That's the issue. So scaling is not going to be the best idea for me. So if I come in here and create a new layer, I'm um, sorry, a new camera. Okay. And just hit, okay. Don't worry about all the little things here. And then we're going to just to be safe, turn on the 3d effect on both the background and the fence. Here's my camera. All right, first thing I want to do is separate this. So if I turn this around like this so I can see it and then select my fence layer and then move it away, like right about there, so there's enough space. Now I can go ahead and, and reposition this, all right, and change this whole thing so that it doesn't have this black area here. I can place it like how I want to here, or maybe move it like that right there. Okay. So now when I zoom, or not zoom, when I truck in, okay, when I do this, I'm going to get what's called parallax. 
All right. Uh, notice right here. Notice this tree and notice the top of the fence here. Okay. I'm going to zoom in over in this area. But what I want you to do is to notice how this peaks of the fence, how they move according to this tree. Okay. So this is the difference between trucking or a dolly versus zooming in. Okay. So here's me going through the fence and past it and zooming in further into the background, just like that. Also notice what happens to the fence. It's a little bit blurry. Okay, it's out of focus. It's a depth of field. So if I come back over here and I have to move it just a tad over here. Okay. Notice that it's different from a zoom. This is a zoom. Sorry, let me go back. This is zooming in. Zooming all means is that the image gets bigger, okay? But when I move forward in space, again, watch the tree, watch pretty much everything, how they all change, okay? So you can see this, that little side movement that goes there, okay? See that? So I'm actually going through because these objects are not on top of each other, they're further away. So we're going through the fence and into the background more. Okay. Now, uh, this is animated just like anything else. I'm going to try to put it back where it was, how I liked it. I'll put it right about there. Okay. And if you open up your camera and go to the transforms, you have all these things. So when I use the dolly here, you can see, you can look down here what's moving. There's the point of interest and position right there. Just right there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set some keys on both of these. Okay. And if I go a little bit further down, let's say it takes about uh, five seconds to get through that fence. Those peaks so that I can look at the mountains in the distance. Okay. I'm going to stop. Hold on. Let's stop right there so I can keep it a little bit. Okay. And all I want to do is so that it smooths out, I'm going to go ahead and keyframe assistant and smooth in, or easy in on those two. And then it should play, uh, there it is, going through the fence. Okay. You can always change a few aspects of this too. If you want to move it a little further this way, okay, like that. That looks a little bit better, maybe getting the fence out of the view completely. This is similar to what uh, animation used to call the multiplane camera. Okay. Where it creates that depth of field. So everything's in focus right now, but as the camera goes through it, the fence goes out of focus, which perfectly makes sense. And then we focus something in the, di in the distance. Okay. How does this work for motion graphics? Well, it makes everything look you know, a little cooler, it pops, okay? So if you have words and items and things that you want it to come from behind the camera to the front, you can do that. And what's cool about this is that you can actually, you don't have to move the camera. So as an example, let's go ahead and make a, uh, just something really quick, like um, we use a, a ellipse tool and I'll just make, a circle here. Okay. So this layer, let me just close these for a second. All right. And let's go to our 3D object. We're going to turn that around. Okay. And that's a shape layer. All right. So we can move this however we want to. All right. And if we, um, if you made another camera, Okay, this camera that we're looking through now, okay, this is the original, all right, that I was looking at before, all right, uh, this is the uh, new camera here, and we can turn that around, oh, sorry, I pressed the wrong one, hold on, I meant this one, uh, if we can turn that around, this camera that's pink currently, that's the, new camera. That's, that's the old camera, okay. 
So if I wanted to, I can grab that shape layer here and make it appear from behind here. I know where this camera's at. You can actually manipulate this camera too. You can move it forward from here and then I can move that there. And then I'm currently in a separate camera so I can see what's going on, okay? And let's go back to... Camera active was one. Let me just double check my snapshot. Oh. I need to get to. Oh, here, active camera. Um, one, there it is. Okay. So it, it used to be down here, but uh, camera one is right here. Okay. So camera one, camera two, all the. These are all like. Uh, preset cameras too, so you don't have to worry about that, but you can rename them to however you want. Right now, I'm in the, the second camera, so I can see this. So if I wanted to do uh, something with, uh, oh, sorry. Something with that, I wanna make sure I'm getting it right. It's a little difficult in here, uh, just because we don't get to see the whole, um, the whole scene, but like right here, let's say I just um, set a key on the position of that circle, and then over here, it uh, actually I'll put it later. Let's put it a little bit later, and then I can grab the circle, put it in the view there, and you just have to manipulate this to make sure you're getting it all. It's going to look a little odd um, at first, but we'll see. I'm just trying to give you an idea, okay. And, oh, sorry, all this is happening because I manipulated everything. And so you should, like, fully plan this. But let me uh, let me go back here and then rework that a little bit. And I'm going to put that right about there again. And basically the, the circle comes in as a separate object, you know, floating behind the camera. Um, I need to see this through the first camera and make sure you have it selected. Okay, there we go. And then I probably should use a different object, not this shape layer. Anyway, but that's the idea. And it's, this gets a little more complicated. This is what I'm saying, like, you know, you're learning the basic stuff. You probably would never use these things because in your directions, some of you have told me about, you're not going to be doing stuff like this anyway, okay? But it's good for you to know how to use it, right? But for the motion graphic stuff, again, this is tools that you'll need to learn how to manipulate, how to get through it. Um, it takes time, okay? It's not going to be taught to you all in this one class, okay? So I'm just showing you the, the different aspects of it, and then from there, you can go ahead and do whatever you want. So, But the basic fundamental thing is what I showed you, and I'm going to delete these few things here is under the camera, uh, okay, let me just zoom in. So I'm just manipulating the camera here, placing it how I want it, and then hit play to see if it goes through my fence again like it did before. That's the essentially, essentially that's really the most you're gonna do it. If you're gonna do anything that has a lot more movement, you're gonna use a 3D software, okay? You're not gonna do it here. Because as you can see, it gets kind of wonky and funky. And something like Maya, I'll show you that real quick. You'll see how much easier it is to do the same effect. Plus, and when you learn Maya or Blender or some other kind of 3D package, you're going to see that there's a lot of shortcuts you can do through that versus trying to like struggle with another software okay because again it always goes back to this to the purpose of the tool if the tool is to make something three-dimensional then use a 3d software okay but if you're just doing a simple effect like this where the camera goes through that's easy to do in after effects you know we don't have to stress it uh maya is it opening let me see I opened it. 
I'm gonna give you guys a break in a minute. We'll come back. We'll do the whole thing together here, okay? So that we know, all right? And in the meantime, let me upload those to the um, to Canvas. It's gonna be in the files of those two images. Uh, let me rename them too. But I want to show you quickly in in Maya how uh, better the 3D camera is. Okay, and let me upload. Okay, and let me have to show you my uh, after the break because uh, it takes a while. Oh, there's two opening. Okay, so those two files, the landscape and the fence, are in the files section on Canvas, so you can go ahead and download them now. Uh, the, the landscape and the fence, okay? The landscape is a PSD, it's a Photoshop file, and the fence is a PNG. And let me close this. We don't need this anymore. Okay, I'm going to have to show you this later. I'm going to stop the video that I'm recording now um, and then upload that. So let me stop.